on Authentic Ag, it's all things beef as we celebrate May, recognized as Beef Month in Kansas. Kevin Thielen and John Saki will be joining us for the Kansas Beef Council. Also have features from some of the state's agriculture groups and as well, agriculture news. I'm Ken Rogers, this is Authentic Ag. Brought to you in part by Kansas Farm Bureau. A grassroots organization representing the state's farmers and ranchers since 1919. KFB.org. Kansas Wheat Commission, leading in the adoption of profitable innovations for wheat. Online, kswheat.com. And Kansas Corn, building the future of Kansas Corn. Online, kscorn.com. Watch Ag AM in Kansas online at agaminkansas.com. In agricultural news from agview.net, Kansas net farm income rose last year despite the weather extremes, trade disputes, and depressed market prices. But that increase came with a catch. Average net farm income across the state climbed to $100,000 in 2018, marking the third year in a row of gains after a deep slide in net income in 2015. This data comes from an annual summary of the records of the Kansas Farm Management Association member farms. Now, not all farms in the state are KFMA members, but on a year-to-year -year basis, the numbers reflect the state of Kansas of agriculture that according to Kevin Herbel, who is the executive director of KFMA. He says that farmers' average net income of $100,000 can be deceiving. However, 63% of the net farm income did come from things like crop insurance as well as government payments in a continuing era of tight margins as well as some cash flow constraints. In fact, the total of government payments received by the farms involved in the KFMA alone, nearly 55% of net income. That included traditional farm program payments, as well as livestock payments, conservation payments, and payments that uh, were linked to uh, USDA and the Ag Market Facilitation Program that helped producers affected by that ongoing uh, retaliation tariff and a loss of the export market. You can find more on this at agview.net. By the way, MFP payments comprise an estimated 37% of the net farm income for the average farms. The numbers varied across the state based on really the type of crops that were grown as well as the crop yields. The renewable fuel standard has lowered gas prices by an average of 22 cents a gallon in recent years. It also saved a typical American household $250 annually. That according to a study just out by an economist and energy policy expert, Dr. Philip K. Verlager, Jr. This study used an ecometric model to estimate the impacts of the RFS, which requires refiners to blend increasing amounts of renewable fuels along with the gasoline and diesel on the crude oil and gasoline prices over the last four years. Now the findings reveal that the RFS has provided substantial economic benefits to a number of consumers in the U.S. as well as worldwide. The study concludes that by expanding fuel supplies by approximately 1 million barrels a day, the RFS reduces the price of crude oil by about $6 a barrel on average from 2015 through 2018. In turn, gas prices reduced by an average of 22 cents a gallon. Uh, that amounts to oh, savings of nearly $5 every time a consumer fills up. Now, according to the study, the RFS is responsible for putting roughly $90 billion back into the pockets of U.S. consumers over the last four years. It is increasing discretionary income as well as raising the nation's gross domestic product. That's Ag News. Stay with us. More coming up.
Agriculture information on your computer or mobile device, news and views on grains, livestock policy, and opinions from newsmakers can be found by liking AgView on Facebook and on Twitter, follow AgView News, a reliable and relevant source, agview.net. Premier Farm and Home has what you need to make your lawn the best in the neighborhood. Hi, I'm Ken. We choose Premier Farm and Home for the professional look that we do ourselves. Feel free to stop in. You can also visit our website at heycow.com. Kim Mannering with Hardy Insurance. Today we will talk about umbrella coverage. Did you know that if you're held liable in any type of accident, the judgment can claim your assets? Please give me a call so we can discuss 316-945-6733. Watch Ag AM in Kansas online at agaminkansas.com. Welcome back. It is May and Beef Month, and joining us is Kevin Thielen, Executive Director of the Kansas Beef Council. Always look forward to this time of the year. <laughs> Nothing better than celebrating beef. Well, exactly. Happy Beef Month, Ken, or I, I think most people, you know, uh, grilling season. I, I think we've kind of earned that this year, especially with the cold weather we've kind of had. And I know most people I've talked with, they've been excited to get the grill out and, and enjoy some good beef on that grill. We have. We, well, mine's already gotten to work out, so <laughs> we're, uh, we're, we're, we're really looking forward to a great summer. Uh, Kevin, let's talk about it. There's, there's a lot of uncertainty in, in, in kind of uh, agriculture country with a lot of things going on. But one thing that is a big driver of the Kansas economy, that is the beef industry. That's right. You know, the, um, from an ag standpoint, can't, the beef industry is the largest segment of agriculture. And of course, agriculture is the largest industry that we have in the state of Kansas. And so that's why for a, a number of years, the governor has proclaimed Beef Month, um, just recognizing how important it is. And, and we had two families down at the state house um, to, there for the, the declaration and the signing, the, the Carr family and, and uh, the Pachecos with their, their young family came in and kind of represented, you know, what Kansas farmers and ranchers do raising beef. And, and it was kind of neat to see the governor interact with them. They have young kids and um, it, it was really kind of neat. And I think just really brings a lot of um, kind of the, the attention that I think we all know when you think about everything that goes on in, in the state's economy, you know, beef producers are local. And that's what we know from a lot of our research that, you know, they're involved in the schools, they're involved in the local churches, local communities. Um, and that, that all has a major driver to the state's economy. And as you said, you've been busy, not only Beef Month, but really uh, doing a lot of ramp up to this time. And, and, and outreach is another probably one of those key factors in, in talking about all the different cuts, all the ways to prepare it, and just overall why it should be uh, part, of a, part of a healthy diet. Well, exactly. And, and we have, we've had um, several nutrition uh, seminars, if you will, where we have a registered dietitian on staff, and, and her role is to educate you know, others in her field or her profession about having beef in a healthy diet. And so we've had several of those coming up. At the end of May, we have a program coming up called, the, the, uh, called Nutrition Adventure. And essentially what it is, is we'll bring in about 45 registered dietitians from around the U.S. Um, and we partner with the surrounding states um, and we do it as a joint effort. But essentially what it is, is it's a protein immersion event so they learn about the science behind beef and, and why that's part of a healthy diet. But what we're finding in that group is that how cattle are raised and kind of the day-to-day -day activities of farmers and ranchers are very important. So we try to embed that into those conferences and it, and it really resonates extremely well. Before we go, let's talk a little bit about just the economics of the exports. We eat a lot of beef in Kansas, but we also need it to go other places. We do, and um, you know, we're at about, th according to USMEF, 310 to $320 per animal. So a huge port, a huge value comes from our exports. Great, all right, Kevin, thanks a lot again. Go out and celebrate uh, beef year round. Kevin Thielen, the Executive Director of the Kansas Beef Council, has joined us. We'll have more coming up. Next time you see a beautiful field of corn, reach out and thank the farmers who work tirelessly to raise corn for livestock feed, renewable fuels, and exports to feed a growing world population. 
The farmers on the Kansas Corn Commission work for Kansas Corn with grower-funded checkoff dollars that support foreign and domestic market development, research, promotion, and education to expand opportunities for Kansas farmers. To learn more, visit kscorn.com. Many seed companies claim to offer the latest genetics, but how many have tested those genetics in soils just like yours? The Oldie Seed Know to Grow Research Program has fully tested the latest seed genetics in soils that are right in your neighborhood. The Oldie Seed Know to Grow Program can recommend the best performing hybrids from technologies like Enlist, Extend, and Liberty Link that will optimize the yield and profit of every acre on your farm. Contact Oldie Seed today. Well, joining us now, John Soxie, as we continue our celebration of uh, Beef Month in Kansas. He's Director of Industry Relations for the Kansas Beef Council. And uh, John, uh, we're going to spend a few moments now talking about BQA. you got to tell us, what is BQA? Yeah, Ken, well, first of all, thank you for having us on the, the program just for a couple minutes to talk about beef quality assurance training. So, uh, you know, we, we keep continuing to hear that consumers want to know where their food comes from. And so BQA is, is basically kind of a continual producer education process uh, for farmers and ranchers, veterinarians. Uh, but it's the, the principles or the guidelines of BQA is, goes over things like low stress cattle handling, best stockmanship principles. Uh, um, we go over things like proper injection sites, how do you maybe more efficiently or effectively uh, design your livestock handling facilities, so kind of the all-encompassing uh, best management practices. Is this a requirement if you, if you own cattle? So uh, totally voluntary uh, if you're a cow-calf, kind of in the stalker uh, phase of the beef community. Uh, here about a year or so ago, um, some packers have required uh, kind of on the feed yard side, uh, if you are retaining ownership of your cattle through the feed yard and they're going to uh, one of those packers that you will uh, need to be BQA certified. So kind of on the feed yard side, um, it's mandatory. Uh, Cow-calf, it's, it's still voluntary. Okay, so you've been doing a lot of events also and getting a lot of folks uh, qualified, accredited, correct? Yes, so we did, Ken, we did uh, six in-person trainings. Uh, uh, we started about middle of February uh, and went to, uh, actually just wrapped up a couple of weeks ago, but we had uh, locations in uh, Pratt, Winfield, uh, Salina, Garnett, uh, Atchison, and then wrapped up with a, a training in, in Manhattan on the K-State campus. And uh, Ken, we had about 600 producers wow. through those six um, in-person trainings. And, you know, we, we continue to get uh, some of the older uh, farmers and ranchers that, you know, they're predominantly the ones that come to a lot of those meetings. But uh, Ken, you and I know that the average age of the farmer and rancher keeps going up. Right. And uh, so about the past year or so, we've been trying to focus and key in on those uh, younger farmers and ranchers that are going to be, you know, taking over the operation in, in the next three or five years. So that last session in Manhattan we did at K-State geared towards the ag students and then did a live broadcast uh, out to uh, Fort Hayes State University. Sure. Now you have an event also coming up this fall. Yes, um, so we will be hosting a uh, regional stockmanship and stewardship event uh, partnering with NCBA and this is basically, you know, if you've been through a BQA training, uh, it's taking the principles of BQA and we'll just draw it out into a live session. Um, so we'll do live cattle handling demos. Um, you know, how do you work cattle on foot using stock dogs, horse, horseback. Um, we'll do some shoot side demonstrations as well. So even if you've been through BQA, uh, we'd really encourage you to, to attend this event. Sure. Buy more information on online. Yep, um, you can call our office, Kansas Beef Council office, and ask for myself. Um, you can also go to stockmanshipandstewardship.org. Um, you can go ahead and already register. Um, we've made it pretty affordable for farmers and ranchers, $100 for the day and a half training, um, and then students are at $50. Okay, very good. Well, John, we appreciate the update and what's going on with BQA, very important for the industry, so thanks a lot. Ken, we appreciate the time. John Soxie with uh, the Kansas Beef Council has joined us in Beef Month here in Kansas. Stay with us, more coming up. What if U.S. soybean meal were more than a commodity? If seed companies and the soybean checkoff built a better variety? That future is here. The time is now. 
To meet end-user demands, the Soybean Checkoff is investing in the compositional quality of soybeans, including meal. A message from the Kansas Soybean Commission, the Soybean Checkoff, progress powered by Kansas farmers. Kansas State University researchers have received national recognition for a study that shows how planting a mustard cover crop helps improve soil health and ultimately boost soybean yields. Their work, conducted with funding from the Kansas Soybean Commission, has been recognized by the supporters of Agricultural Research Foundation, which works to increase federal investment in agriculture. That coalition featured the K-State study in a March 27 report, highlighting several pioneering research projects. Charcoal rot is a fungus that chokes a plant's recycling system so it cannot get nutrients or water, ultimately killing its roots. It tends to be worse in hot, dry conditions. There are chemical treatments for charcoal rot, but the K-State researchers were interested in finding natural agents to counter the fungus' effects. Over two growing seasons, they showed that planting mustard seed, the same plant used to make the popular condiment, as a cover crop reduces the incidence of charcoal rot in the soil. They also tested various management options, including planting soybeans into standing mustard seed, mowing it, or tilling its residue into the field. Their key finding was to leave the mustard crop as intact as possible. The group is continuing its work, including exploring the effects on yields due to sudden death syndrome and soybean nematodes. You can learn more at kansassoybeans.org research on the web. You don't have to be a farmer or rancher to become a Kansas Farm Bureau member. Anyone can join. As a member, you'll get discounts on things like hotels and entertainment, health and wellness services, cell phone plans, and more. You'll also strengthen the lives of your fellow Kansans and help build strong, prosperous communities through agriculture advocacy and education. Join us today. Visit kfb.org join to learn more. Last month, the U.S. Department of Agriculture's National Agricultural Statistics Service released the 2017 Census of Agriculture, providing critical information about agriculture nationwide, as well as data that is specific to Kansas. The Ag Census is a complete count of U.S. farms and ranches and the people who operate them. For this census, Kansas had a 70% response rate, which is very close to the national average. According to the census, there are 58,569 farms and 45.8 million acres of land that make up those farms. 15 million of pasture and 29 million of cropland. It was interesting to note that 76% of Kansas farms have internet access, primarily through mobile phone use. While the average age of producers did rise slightly to 58.1, about 10% of them are young producers, 35 years old or younger, and nearly 25% of producers are defined as new and beginning producers, with 10 years or less on any farm. In 2017, the number of farms that have women as producers increased significantly to 34% of the farms in Kansas, and 10% of producers said they have served in the military. Over the next few months, the USDA will be releasing state and county profiles, as well as profiles of other regions such as watersheds and congressional districts. The Census of Agriculture is taken only once every five years and provides the only source of uniform, comprehensive, and impartial agriculture data for every county in the nation. Through the Census of Agriculture, producers can show the nation the value and importance of agriculture and can influence the decisions that will shape the future of U.S. agriculture. To learn more about the 2017 Ag Census, go to www.nass.usda.gov slash agcensus. The Kansas Wheat Innovation Center in Manhattan is rediscovering ways to get improved varieties and new genetics in the hands of farmers faster. Grower-led and checkoff-funded research initiatives are bringing about positive change. This grassroots leadership provides a strong voice in Topeka and Washington, D.C. Now is the time to partner with Kansas Wheat in moving wheat forward. Kansas Wheat Commission and Kansas Association of Wheat Growers, farmers investing in their future and yours. Log on to rediscoverwheat.org.
Governor Laura Kelly recognized the contributions ranchers and feeders make to the state's economy by declaring May as Beef Month in Kansas. The official proclamation signing took place at the Capitol in Topeka with several members of the beef community joining the governor for the ceremony. The Kansas Beef Council and Kansas Livestock Association are making Kansas residents aware of the hard work producers put in to make the beef industry a vibrant contributor to the state's economy and employment base. Facts highlighted include the $8.27 billion in cash receipts generated by cattle and calves during 2017. Kansans also are hearing how the state ranks nationally in various cattle and beef production categories. The state was third in the nation in total cattle numbers with 6.35 million head on ranches and in feed yards as of January 1st of 2019. Kansas ranked second in the fed cattle marketed category with 5.1 million head in 2018. The state ranks sixth in beef cow numbers with 1.53 million head. Cattle processing is big business in Kansas as well. The state was second in commercial cattle processed with 6.7 million head in 2018. All of these statistics justify honoring those involved in the beef community during May, from cow-calf producers to grazers and feeders, for their part in one of the state's largest economic drivers. All over the country, more and more communities are making the change to biodiesel, made from U.S. soybean oil. And the decision continues, improving the health and welfare for millions of Americans, while adding billions to our national economy. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Supply. Hi everyone, Zach Gotot here with Paragon Ag. The ag markets are trying to rebound after President Trump's most recent comments regarding trade negotiations with China. Over the weekend, he sent out a tweet saying that the 10% tariff on $200 billion worth of Chinese goods would be run up to 25% come the end of the day on Friday. This, of course, sent the markets in a downward spiral soybeans and hogs taking the blunt of it. Currently, the U.S. and China are meeting in D.C. to try and hammer out the final details before the week's end. The funds still hold a record net short position in the grain space, keeping prices suppressed. We are still waiting to come across a news headline that would scare them out of that position. We do have the May supply and demand report set to come out at the end of the week to give trade fresh numbers to chew on. Many analysts are expecting a bump in ending stocks across the board, which could keep old crop prices at bay. Looking more specifically at corn, we have our eye on planting progress. We are currently sitting at 23% planted versus last year's at 46. The extended weather forecast does not seem to show a break either. If we see later planted corn, we may see the new crop contract move higher. On the soybean side, the, big, the biggest issue again is trade. If we get a deal in place, we could see a jump higher. If Trump sticks with his guns and ups the tariffs, we may find out where the bottom really is. Weather is an issue here as well. We are sitting at 6% planted this year versus 14 last year. If we get the seed in late, we will likely see lower yields. Wheat followed corn down at the start of the week. Coming off of news regarding China as well as the Kansas wheat tour estimating an average yield of just over 47 bushels an acre. The USDA rated this year's crop as 64% good to excellent versus last year's at 34. We did bounce back, however, as news of a freeze event occurred in France this week. It does not look like it will hamper production much, but it does help us keep in mind that we are still due for a freeze here at home. Final decisions are difficult, no matter what time of year. If you need to sell last year's crop or think you should get started on new crop, but can't decide, consider an alternative strategy. Let us help you find that strategy that fits you. Give us a call here at Paragon Ag Advisors at 888-452-8751. I'm Zach Gotta. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you for joining us for Authentic Ag. If you have questions or comments, email me, kenrogers at gmail.com. Invite your friends to join us next week on Authentic Ag. We'll see you then. My name is Karen Cope and I have multiple sclerosis. I heard about the stem cell research with the Kansas Regenerative Medicine Center. 
Before we decided to do that, I had cognitive testing done. After the stem cells, um, I had the cognitive testing completed again, and the results indicated that I had a six-point increase in my cognitive abilities. It was like somebody had taken Windex and washed all the fog off my brain, and so I had the concrete validated information that stem cells work. Watch Ag AM in Kansas online at agamincansas.com.